Have you ever been in a house where you could sense the presence of God? Would you like your home to have that same atmosphere of the perfect peace and rest of God? Stay tuned and we'll talk about how you can make that happen. about building a sanctuary but we are talking about building a sanctuary in our homes if you want the presence of God to dwell in your house then your house should have the attributes of God and to find that we're going to look in Galatians 5 22 through 23 it's love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control so there are nine fruits of the Spirit and I'm gonna break it up into three sections of what you can do to get this atmosphere into your home and the first is goodness faithfulness and self-control if you want the radical presence of God in your house then you have to be willing to do something radical James 1 17 says every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is no variation in Him. And as a representative of God and a representative of Christ, we are supposed to be the same. You should be the same at synagogue or at your church as you are whenever you are home with your family. We've been talking a lot about cleaning the leaven out of this house or the sin out of this house. But when you're cleaning the leaven out of your physical house, you need to think about getting rid of anything that is bad or not glorifying God and filling it with the things that are good. When your spirit is hungry, and it will eat anything that you put in front of it, whether it's good or whether it's bad, and that becomes a part of you. And so cleaning out the leaven that is around you is an important part of cleaning the leaven out of here because what you eat is what you are. You are what you eat. So you can play worship music in the background or sermons, find a teaching that you're interested in. And this creates an atmosphere in your house that will only change how your house feels, but this will change how you feel and the way that you react with your family. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. And that brings me to the next three fruits of the Spirit, and that is patience, kindness, and gentleness. As sometimes we live with people who do not agree with our newfound zeal for pleasing the Lord in all areas of our life. So maybe it's a spouse, or maybe um, you're taking care of parents who are set in their ways. So you can't always control what the people around you do. You can only work on yourself. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they only breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone and able to teach patiently, enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Make it your plan to live at peace with everyone and to work on cleaning out the leaven that you can without fighting with other people. The last three fruits of the Spirit to build a sanctuary within our own homes is love, joy, and peace. And to aid you in having that feeling of peace and that feeling of love and joy in your house, it really helps if you have a tidy home. If you followed me on the Clean House 2020 challenge that I did at the first of the year, then you know that you can keep a house clean effortlessly-ish. You just have to set up some routines and you keep at it and eventually your house gets automatically cleaned as I kept saying in the videos. If you've not seen that, I'll put a link to that playlist down below. There's that old saying that cleanliness is next to godliness, which is actually not found in the Bible. It was actually an old Hebrew proverb and then it was later quoted by John Wesley. But it is true that having a clean house can aid in the feeling of having a sanctuary in your house. Proverbs 31 27 says she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Whenever you clean the house it's an act of service or an act of love for your children and for your spouse or even for yourself because whenever your house is a cluttered mess it adds to frustration. We're all quarantined or we're doing this time of social distancing. Um, this is a time that you can really work on building the sanctuary that's in your house. That's what I've been working on 
as we've been in. Um, like I said, get some sermons or some worship music and play it in the background while you clean or while you're just hanging out and playing and enjoying time with your family. Most importantly, start your day with some quiet time with the Lord, just you and God, and allow Him to speak to you and what you can do to make your house a temple for Him. You can have your children have quiet time of their own. But raise them in this way of putting God first and allowing Him to speak into their life. At the time this video is airing, you have five days until Passover if you are celebrating it. If you are not celebrating it, then I encourage you to watch the last video uploaded. I'll put a link to that here. It is a beautiful ceremony that is all about celebrating Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, and you really don't want to miss this teaching tool that you can share with your family. So check that out. Don't forget you can look me up on social media on Facebook or Instagram at Tracy in the Kingdom and we can chat more there or you can chat with me in the comments down below. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe if you're interested in kingdom living, having a God-centered home, raising God-focused children, as well as many videos about the feasts of the Lord and how they can bring you and your children closer to God and teach us more about our Savior. I hope you guys have a fun Passover Seder, and I will see you next Thursday. Bye.